Okay, let's go back to the example um, of the two coins that we flip. If we flip two coins, then our sample space is the following. We can get tail, tail, or we can get head, tail, or we can get tail, head, or head, head. And if we now define a random variable x as the number of heads observed, then the domain of x will be 0, or 1, or 2. So if you look at the first outcome in my sample space S, um, remember that we have no heads in the first outcome, so that my x will be a 0. And then head tail, I've got one head, tail head, I've got one head, and then head head, I've got two heads. So now we know the domain of our random variable, but we would like to associate probabilities with these outcomes. Now if we make use of the classical definition of probability, we have four equally likely outcomes in our sample space and each of, because they are equally likely, each of those outcomes will occur with a probability of 1 over 4. So the probability that my x will be a 0 is 1 over 4 or 0 0.25. The probability that my x will take on a 1 I've got head tail or tail head that will give me an x of 1. So that probability is then a quarter plus a quarter to give me 0.5. And the probability that x is equal to 2 is again a quarter, 1 over 4. So here we have a table with the possible outcomes for my random variable 0, 1 or 2. Remember we use the lowercase x to indicate the outcome of a random variable and the capital X to indicate the random variable itself. And then uh, we have the associated probabilities with each of these um, outcomes. So P of X is the probability that X will take on the specific value. So for example, P of 0 is the probability that X is equal to 0, and that is equal to 0 0.2 five. P of 1 is the probability that X is equal to 1, and that is 0 0.5, and the same for the probability that X is 2. So what we have here is a discrete probability distribution. And this is a table or a formula or a graph that lists all the possible values of a discrete random variable, in our case 0, 1 or 2, together with the associated probabilities. Now what are the requirements for a valid probability distribution? First of all, all the probabilities must lie between 0 and 1 inclusive. So you cannot get negative probabilities and you cannot get probabilities that exceed 1. And if we sum these probabilities, they have to add to 1. So if we go back here, you can see that none of these probabilities um, are negative or exceed 1. And also if we add them, 0.25 plus 0.5 plus 0.25, they add up to 1. Okay, remember a previous example, on your way to work you pass three traffic lights and we define a random variable x as the number of red traffic lights on your way to work. So the domain is given as 0, 1, 2 or 3. So if you have a um, lucky day, you, you get no tra red traffic lights on your way to work. If it's a very slow day, you get three traffic li red traffic lights on your way to work. So in this case, we cannot make use of the classical definition um, to find the probabilities. And therefore we have to make use of the relative frequencies to find our associated probabilities and set up our probability distribution. So let's say that um, we decide to experiment for 20 days, for four weeks of um, five work days, so we have 20 days that we travel to work, and we count how many of these days did we 
across no red traffic lights. How many of these days did we get one, two, or three red traffic lights? Now suppose that three out of the 20 days we had no red traffic lights, then that is our frequency, and our relative frequency will then be three over the total number of days, which is 20, to give us 0 0.15. And if we had 11 days on which we had only one red traffic light, then that relative frequency will be 11 over 20, which is 0 0.55. The same for two traffic lights and for three traffic lights. And we get these relative frequencies. And if you add these relative frequencies, they should add up to one. Okay, so but this is only for 20 workdays. Suppose we work with a full year, and if we assume that we have 48 work weeks of five days each, then in total we have 240 days that we travel to work. So if we find that 31 out of these 240 days we had no red traffic light, we can calculate the relative frequency as 31 over 240 to give us 0 0.13. 130 days we had only one red traffic light with a relative frequency of 0.54. In 69 of these days we had two red traffic lights, so the relative frequency 69 over 240 is 0.29. And then also for the last one, three red traffic lights on 10 of these 240 days with a relative frequency of 0 0.04. And again, if you add these relative frequencies, they add up to 1. Now, we can use these relative frequencies now as an indication of the probabilities associated with each of the outcomes. Uh, and because our n is relatively large, in this case 240, um, it is a valid um, approach to find the probabilities. And therefore we can set up our discrete probability distribution. Uh, in this table we have the possible outcomes for x, the number of red traffic lights on your way to work, with the associated probabilities. So now we can use this probability distribution to answer certain questions. For example, we can ask what is the probability that you will pass more than one red traffic light on your way to work? So you want to find the probability that your random variable x more than one means greater than one with one not included. So this can also be written as the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2. So that is the probability that x is 2 plus the probability that x is 3. And we can substitute from our probability distribution 0 0.29 plus 0 0.04. Another question we can ask is, what is the probability that you will pass at least one red traffic light on your way to work? So that can be written as the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1. At least 1 means 1 or more. So that would be the probability that x is 1 plus the probability that x is 2 plus the probability that x is 3. But another way in which you can write this is 1 minus the probability that x is equal to 0. Remember, the probabilities all add up to 1. So we can take 1 minus the probability that x is equal to 0. So that would then be 1 minus 0 0.13. Okay, so these two simple illustrations just to show you how you can then make use of your probability distribution to answer certain questions.